full first I will read this thing. <coughs> Today the negating the conception to be eliminate the appearance of true existence. So object of negation. Refuting the true existence of subject and object according to the realistic both the object and consciousness <coughs> it have true existence however they are the very difficult position because there is no proof of their situation where it can be refuted realistic the true existence of the object is established from the truly existent sense faculties of consciousness. Mother Mega, what can be established a true existence? It depends upon a truly existent consciousness. Realistic. On the other hand, we can also say the consciousness is established as truly existent from the object it is conscious of. <clears throat> Mother Mega, what can depend upon true, ex true existence, object of consciousness, if they mutually true, truly exist through the force of one another, then when uh, one is not established as truly existent, other will also not to be so established. And in that case, they would both be non-truly existent. For example, if someone has no son, he cannot be established as a father. And also if there is no one established as a father, where can the child come from? In this way, since without a child, there is no father. And without a father, no child. In both cases, they can be neither likewise the object and consciousness cannot exist independently of one another <coughs> realistic on the contrary through dependence we can establish things truly existence for example since a sprout is produced from a seed we can understand the true existence of the seed from the sprout even though the sprout depends upon it. Likewise, why can we cannot understand that there is truly existent object of consciousness from the consciousness which is produced from it? Uh, Mother Mika, <coughs> uh, they, that is not the same thing. Essence of the seed can be understood by seeing the sprout that resulted from it with a consciousness that is other than the sprout. Yet, what mind can understand a truly existence? Consciousness that understand and has arising from truly existence, object of consciousness. It is impossible to cognize a truly existence consciousness since such things does not exist. Mm, then next one is establishing emptiness of true existence from the viewpoint of the cause, uh, refuting protection from no cause. So that school is the non-Buddhist Charvakas assert that all things are produced from no cause because in one of their scriptures, it states all things such as the rising of the sun, the flowing of water downhill, the roundness of peas and sharpness of thorn, and the tails, feathers of the peacock were not made by anyone. They arise from their own nature. So this school will come back. <clears throat> this is uh, Indian school. So. Uh, Mother Mega, this assertion is unacceptable because sometimes the production of an effect from the collection of all it causes and 
can be seen even by the true perception of worldly people. Furthermore, it is understood through the inherent inference that the variety among effects such as the different steams of lotus flower it produced because of their having a variety of causes. Charwaka. Charwaka in English school, this school name is Hedonist. 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 Don't believe past, future. Just slap. <clears throat> Yet by what the variety of cause been made? Mother Mega, by a variety of previous causes. Charvaka, for what reason is distinct cause able to produce distinct effect? Mother Mega, this comes from the force of its previous cause. Refutation production from permanent cause. The non Buddhist Nayayika and Vasasika believe that cause of everything to be the god Ishwara. Ishwara have five qualities. <clears throat> Namely, divinity, purity, and being worthy of veneration, permanence, oneness, and being the creator of everything. Mother Maker. If you accept Ishwara to be the cause of all being, then one moment, please. What exactly is Ishwara? Ishwara is Shiva, right? Nayayika. He is the great element of the earth, water, fire, air, and space. Madhamik. Indeed, these elements are the cause of whatever is formed from them. But why tire yourself out over the mere name Ishwara that you have to them? This is not worth arguing about in any case. With this assertion, you contradict your own definition of Ishwara because since earth and other great elements are multiplied in permanent without conscious movement, not divine, something trodden upon, unclean, they cannot be Ishwara. Space too is not Ishwara because it is unmoving and if the self is not in either because it has already been repeated <coughs> above. Furthermore, if we cannot conceive of the creator Ishwara, what is the point of trying to describe the this unconceivable entity? Moreover, exactly what effect is Ishwara is suited to produce? Nayayika. He created the self, the all atomic particles of the earth, element and so forth, as well as the latter continuity of himself. <clears throat> Mother Mega. If you don't accept the nature of these things to by permanent, if you do it, it is contradictory. To say they are produced, consciousness is not produced by Ishwara. It is particular state arise from the various object of consciousness and it mere cognitive nature arise from a beginningless series of the previous cognition, pleasure and pain to are produced from <coughs> wholesome and unwholesome actions respectively. Therefore, please tell me what effects are produced by Ishwara. If the cause Ishwara, the permanent producer of effect, has no beginning, how can the effect of pleasure and so forth have a beginning? Similarly, since Ishwara also has no end, end why would pleasure and pain not always exist? According to you, they should exist in this way, but in reality, they are clearly occasional phenomena. Uh, Nayayika. It is not necessary that Ishwara always produce effect because 
Although he is prominent, he depends upon others' occasional condition in order to produce them. Mother Mega, yet it will follow the Ishwara cannot depend upon anything else because there are no phenomena other than those that have been created by him. Therefore, upon that, upon what does his production of effect de depend? If the dependent are born a group of other conditions, it will follow that those conditions themselves would become the cause instead of Ishwara. This is so because what the cause and condition were assembled, Ishwara will no power not to produce the effect. And without this other cause and condition, he would have no power to produce effect. If effect were produced without the desire of Ishwara, it would follow that they were under the power of something other than him. Even if effect were created uh, according to his desire, this protection would be dependent upon his desire. And if his certain creation were dependent, what will become of your permanent independent Ishwara? He will be under the power of impermanent desire. In addition, the Vasasika assert that both animate and inanimate walls are produced by permanent atomic particles. This assertion cannot be accept, accepted because we have already refuted permanent atomic particles above some kind of school. <clears throat> Believe that all knowable entity can be classified under the conscious self and material primal substance together with its manifestation among these two the self is neither a cause nor an effect where the permanent partless materials invisible in all creating primal substances asserted to be the cause of all. They speak about balanced state of the three qualities tribuna, equanimity, pleasure and pain called in their system purity, sattva, activity, raja, darkness, tama as being the primal substance and they speak about the imbalance state of their three qualities. Early state that manifest from the initial imbalance of the primal substance as being the world. Okay, this finish. <laughs> now this school called you know, this school right this school called the Hedonist, is ancient <coughs> Indian school, Hedonist. <coughs> so Hedonist is a non-Buddhist tennis. So that who assert that the non-existence of the past and future lives and that the mind arises adventitiously from the body as light is kindled from the lamp. That school, he don't just remember we have. Oh, that school coming. Now this <clears throat> all school except permanent self. So they all stood self is permanent. So now here in the Buddhist, uh, we have uh, different. That's the Buddhist school, you know. So it's, school have different, different explanation of the self. So mind only school self is mind based of all in the self. Uh, Sotantika self is mental consciousness. So and then uh, Madhya Mega <coughs> self is collection of the five aggregates. It's merely labeled by the mind. So different. So now here <coughs> first. Uh, we have to know 
from Buddhist perspective, self is very important. We experience because of oneself. We want eliminate pain, suffering because of oneself. So oneself understanding self is very important. So in the Madhamega Pasangiga we point self is collection of the five aggregates. So five aggregates is the base of designation and then designated person, he or she. So your five aggregates is the base of designation of yourself. So your body and mind and then designated self. So that kind of self <clears throat> uh, first maybe I want to make this one A, B, C, right? <laughs> A. A, we can say person, I, and mere I. Person, I, and mere I. These are conventional, right? Existing. So number A, I can make like A, person, I, and mere I. I want. So, so. then we have... <clears throat> Truly existent self, inherent existence self, right? And independent existence self, self, prominent, partless, and also we have <coughs> uh, independent self. Oh, well, these are non-existent self. Okay, so person, I, mere I, generally speaking, do exist. Now. True existence self, inherent existence self, uh, permanent self, partless, independent, self-sufficient is object of negation. Not so. This number one, right? A, B, we have <coughs> uh, conception of conception of also. So now B, I want to make this clear, you know, that when we talk about self, gross and subtle self, okay, gross self and subtle self. So the gross self depends on your aggregates. When your aggregates are gone, all gross self cease, you're gone, right? But subtle self will go continue from Buddhist perspective, okay? So we have divided into self two types, gross self and subtle self. Now gross self, <coughs> so gross self, right? So gross self, so now we have this uh, conception of a self, conception of self as partless, permanent, independent, is gross self-grasping. Conception of self to be belief, permanent, partless, independent is conception of self artificial or artificial. Subtle <coughs> conception of self um, is uh, self-sufficient, self-sufficient, right? Self-sufficient, you understand? Self-entity. Self-sufficient, self-entity means not depending by something. So this is the number A, right? Number B, we can say that <coughs> that uh, uh, we have this uh, <coughs> conception of Self, self gross and subtle, right? Now subtle, we have conception of I and conception of mind, right? I and mind, I and mind, right? I, you understand I, first I, then mind comes. If there's no I, no mind. I, basis of mind. On the basis of I, then we create the mind. So, and one is intellectual mind grasping, one is 
in it mind grasping. You understand what I'm saying? <coughs> Are you clear? Are you clear about this one? <laughs> so first, first we have we have person, I, and mere I, which is conventional person, conventional I self, right? Now, truly existent self, independent self, object of negation. We have to negate that, right? So that's what talking about emptiness. So when we meditating on emptiness, then we have to negate this innate, uh, independent existence self. So now we make step uh, two, like right? growth and subtle. Like right? growth and subtle, very clear. Growth is self grasping, which grasp permanent, partless, independent self. That's gross self-grasping. Only gross. No inner grasping, this one. Now this self-sufficient, self to be independent without depending on the others. Independent. That self-sufficient <coughs> can be both gross and intellectual and inner grasping. So intellectual and inner grasp, you understand between these two, intellectual grasping is coming from the, your thoughts, thinking these two eggs. In it is natural, right? natural grasping. Every, everybody have inner grasping. As soon as everybody born, grasping is started. No need to teach. Just, just natural grasping. That's innate grasping. So that grasping is very difficult to remove. Intellectual grasping coming from the <coughs> thoughts and something like that, right? Now we have concession of I and mind, right? I. So I and because of mind comes. Do you know this uh, false view of transitory collection? Is the false view of transitory collection is the root of samsara. Samsara created by afflicted emotions. We're not understanding the reality, right? And then we have false view of understanding the reality. So anyway, this one we're talking about conception of uh, I, or truly existent I and truly existent mind. So truly existent I and truly existent mind can be two, grasping intellectual and innate truly existent I, intellectual and innate truly existent mind. So that's very clear, right? Now, other than person, we are talking about truly existence of phenomena. Phenomena, right? Phenomena. Phenomena. So when we talk about a phenomena, we will make two types of phenomena. External phenomena and internal phenomena. So grasping internal phenomena and grasping external phenomena. So we have grasping Divided into two, right? Mainly self grasping of the person and self grasping of the phenomena. So, other than person, we are grasping is phenomena, right? So, if we are grasping external phenomena, is self grasping of the phenomena. If we are grasping internal phenomena, is the self grasping of the phenomena. Now, internal phenomena, right? There's continuation. One is continuation, one is not continuation, right? Inner grasping very continue, very deep, right? It will continue till we become enlightenment. But, but that uh, artificial, all the uh, intellectual grasping is not continuation, right? really stop when you direct realize emptiness directly with the non-conceptual mind directly perceiving emptiness then no more intellectual grasping all cease but inner grasping is continuation so therefore uh, this inner existence of I Artificial and innate. Inner existence of mind, 
artificial and innate. Artificial are cease when we direct the life emptiness. Innate not cease. It will go a long, long time, right? So this one is continuation, one is not continuation. So you understand what I'm saying? Okay, now we have this one, right? <clears throat> Uh, Chandakirti said this one A yogi sees in the mind that affliction and fall arise from the view of transitory collection Okay, that's inner grasp inner grasping of the person yeah. Having understood that the object of that is self he negates self So I negate that independent, inherent existent self. So that is what we are talking about. Self which is to be negated. Now, <coughs> here in the uh, precious garland, right? Nagarjuna said, as long as conception of the aggregate exists, so long therefore does a conception of I exist. Further, when the conception of I exists, there is action. From that further, there is birth and there is will of life. Twelve links of interdependent origination. You understand? <clears throat> and then, um, just as, now this is also in the precious garland. Just as without depending on mirror, like mirror, an image of one's face is not seen. Right? So also there is no eye which does not depend on aggregate. So that's <coughs> we are talking about this uh, self which is Continuation, continuation self, right? So, Pasangiga we found self is collection of the five aggregates. But when you search, you cannot find that self. So, all you can find is it is designated by the mind, merely labeled by the mind. So, merely labeled by the uh, designated collection of the merely labeled by the mind self is continuation, right? So it depends on when we talk about self. We have, sometimes we have talked about gross self and subtle self. Sometimes, now we can talk about general self and particular self. We talk about self is general, right? Particular, your yourself, he or she or whatever. So, so when we talk about continuation of the self, we are talking about which is continue yourself. Your subtle self continue, right? So yourself who who carries this continuation of the self is clay light mind. Clay light mind and continuation of self go together, right? So clay light remember we're talking about uh, clay and mind is the base of everything, right? Clay light mind and uh, the subtle self go together. So all our imprint, right? Imprint, imprint will carry by the self and continuation of the mind. So that's why we talk about next. Next rebirth. You understand what I'm saying? Is it clear? Karmic mm. counting. <coughs> so, uh, so therefore, self <coughs> in the Madhamiga, Pasangiga, self means Pasangiga, we talk about Pasangiga, we put self is aggregation of collection of five aggregates. 
So aggregate is the base of designation and designated your self. So that self can be divided into two, gross and subtle. So gross self, as long as your gross body and growth mind cease. Right? Subtle self we carry, understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? So now, can you make clear? Person, I, mere I, these are conventional existence self. Non-existence self is inherent existence, independent existence, permanent, partless, they are non-existent self, right? So now, <clears throat> inherent existence of I and mine, I come first, then mine let, right? I and then mine. Mine, mine, M-I-N-E, mine, I'm mine. So first, we have aggregates, then attachment to the I, and then this will lead you action, and then create karma, and then create rebirth, and then all this will of life. So that's uh, different from the non-Buddhist school. And, oh, yeah, very really bad. <laughs> uh, Non-Buddhist school yeah. and uh, Buddhist school. So non-Buddhist believe that self is permanent. Mm. So that is... Uh, then it is created by the Ishwara, right? Ishwara created self. Or what? Any questions? Or? Krishna, the, the innate grasping and the intellectual grasping. Mm. When we are exploring this concept of self, mm. once we've established that there is both intellectual grasping and innate grasping, can we innate use, grasp, can yeah. use the intellectual grasping to clear the innate grasping? Yeah, innate grasping is natural grasping. Yeah. No need, just naturally we grasp. Yeah. Every creature, everybody is grasping. That's natural. Now the intellectual grasping is it's not natural. It's coming from your thoughts, yeah. coming from the different uh, teachings or groups or thinking, way of thinking. Oh, you know what I mean? Different, uh, different schools have different view. Different schools have different idea, you know. You, different idea. Idea. So intellectual grasping is idea, you know. Your idea is something. Mm -hmm. this, this thing. So intellectual grasping is easy to remove. Inner grasping is very difficult to remove. So inner grasping is continuation grasping. Intellectual grasping, no continuation, but it will remove sometimes when you understand the direct emptiness with the non-conceptual mind. No thought, just direct perceiving emptiness and all in intellectual grasping cease. But inner grasping is still there, right? It's natural grasping and it is very deep. You know what I mean? So it will take long time to the <clears throat> five Mayana path, right? Five path of first we have path of accumulation, then path of preparation, path of seeing, path of meditation, no more than five paths. So path of accumulation, accumulate merit, merit, merit. Enough good merit. You prepare to understand the nature of reality from intellectually or from conceptual mind. Then thinking, thinking, thinking transform into non-conceptual mind, which is part of seeing, direct perceiving reality. So all intellectual grasping cease. Now part of normal uh, part of meditation, right? So this will take long time. 
ten bumi we talk about ten bumi first bumi to ten bumi so this crossing slowly slowly go like that's why it is continuation it's very deep Sadhu self go with the subtle mind, you know, you know in, the, in the subtle mind, right? Subtle mind and subtle self go together, you know, intermediate state. Clear light, right? Intermediate state, scary. <coughs> <coughs> This subtle, subtle body, right? Subtle wind. Wind and mind should go together, right? No wind, no energy. You know, when wind is mm. like energy, right? Mm. You understand? Like, can, can a father body, like a subtle, like subtle, body can, it, can it have an effect in the physical world? Sorry? Make an effect in the physical world? Father uh, body is like dream body, so. Right. So father body, somebody in the father can like dreaming. Dream body. Mm. So dream body is very subtle, right? Pada body is subtle, so we cannot see that body. But Pada being can see the person, right? So that's uh, according to Tibetan Buddhism, 49 days. Mm. Right? When person pass away, so they will carry ritual till 49 days. You know what I mean? So first week is uh, very important because the person is coming to see the family. So we put all the food, whatever, in the plate. Because first we were close to the family. And then talking to family, nobody talking. Asking, nobody. Upset. And then second week, then no more. Close to family, you know. So then, we are searching rebirth. So we carry all these 49 rituals. In our tradition, you know, when somebody died, everybody do this. Just whole 49 day ritual, prayers, and candlelight offerings, and uh, asking monastery to do the prayers. So that's ritual, 49, maximum 49 days. But you can find a rebirth <laughs> before 49 days. You know what I mean? Any questions? Okay. <clears throat>